Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. <laughs> this is what this is what writing looks like. <laughs> okay, so in the image, you're in uh you're in a room that may not have a window. It may have a window, but that's off camera. Uh there's no art, it's a tight room. There's a laptop on a desk and there are a whole bunch of files in a, in a little kind of, you know, file holder. There's a, there's a kind of a telescopic light, the like desk lamp. You're, you're seated in a kind of a desk office chair. Behind you are two mirrors. Your glasses are on your face. You're seated back. Your eyes are closed. It looks almost like you're taking a nap or just taking a rest. Can't really tell what's on the screen of your laptop, but it looks kind of semi officious. Yeah, your hands are kind of clasped across your your stomach. You're resting. It makes me wonder who's making the photo. But yeah, like what? What? Why this? What is this? Um, I this is this is how I spend a lot of my time writing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's a certain amount where I'm I'm sitting up straight. I'm looking at the screen or maybe I'm, I mean, I can touch type, so I don't always need to look at the screen, but you know, often my fingers are on the keyboard, Yep. but that's, that's about half the time. The other half of the time is I'm sitting in positions like this, leaning back, so either staring up at the ceiling or, or my eyes closed or whatever, just thinking, imagining, trying to, trying to work through the possibilities. Um, mm. As I mentioned, it's like the, the kind of literature that most attracted me is science fiction. Mm -hmm. and Science fiction is the the literature of, of possibilities. The wonderful, positive, what if we figure how to do things figure out how to do things better possibilities and what if we get it all wrong and we we take it to to take this world to hell kind of possibilities. And then the other kind of weird possibilities in between. So thinking through some of those possibilities is is how I spend the a, a fair chunk of my writing time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. So in in a sense, that kind of writing is sort of letting the the connections re reveal themselves to your consciousness, right? So just kind of flowing with with this thing. You're playing in a sandbox and saying, "Okay, I'm just fiddling around, just making connections." Uh, you bump into a narrative problem, for example. And then you're like, okay, well, I wonder where that goes. So what's the question? The question is, how's this? How do you see the notion of revelation, not religious, not that, but revelation is in your eyes are closed, you're kind of sitting with an idea or a problem or a, a narrative kind of twist, and then suddenly a, a thought reveals itself and it occurs to you like, oh, wait a second. What about that direction? So why don't you talk about about the role of that kind of revelation to the writer? Sure. Um, I'm I'm starting to learn that there's there's not a, a sharp distinction or or a dichotomy between planning details, making an outline, plotting out what direction your story is going to go, and the muses and intuition and lateral thinking and ideas, you know, sort of appearing in your, your head out of the ether. Uh, I more and more find I'm, I'm in one way or another, I'm doing both. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, that takes, it takes different forms in, in different stories. You know, one time I'll, I'll have an idea and then I'll sit down and scope out a plot and I have an idea of where the story is going to go. But then I start writing and the story itself starts to become more real, starts to take on a life of its own, and then it goes a new direction. Mm -hmm. Other times, you know, I, I've, got, I've got sort of a vague idea or a feeling or a metaphor that excites me, and I just start writing. And then, then sort of the planning part of my brain intersects itself after I've been working at it for, uh, for a while. And, you know, both of those possibilities and just and other combinations of those happen. But all that, that planning, the outlining, the there's this sort of dichotomy I often hear that are you and I hear it in like chat groups of or 
Facebook groups of, of writers and are you a, a plotter or a pantser? And I just like, do you write, do you start with a, with a plan and a plot and a detailed outline and then you fill in the details or do you write by the seat of your pants? Mm -hmm. And I, I more and more can't relate to the question anymore because mm -hmm. it's, it's like a yin and yang that I'm, I'm doing both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me throw in a, okay, so one of the, the fashions uh, in, in neuroscience at the moment <clears throat> is this notion that we don't have free will, right? Like Robert Sapolsky, an, such an amazing writer, will sit and, and sort of kind of discuss how from the neuroscience side of the things, it's hard to, to, to say there is free will because you can always go back to influences and roots and whatever. So in, in the case of writing, right, which is uh, weaving sentences together that sometimes uh, see that your pants, it's kind of like, I don't know, this is just coming, bleh, you just barf it out. And sometimes it's a planning thing, right? Uh, but or, or often it's a question of both. So has there been a moment, when, and it's particularly with science fiction, because it's all about almost fantasy. It's about, you know, pushing your, your creative, creative sort of thought or whatever it is as far as it will go. So has there been a moment where you surprised yourself, you know, where you're just like, where the hell did that come from? And speaking of Dune, it could, it could have come from eating mushrooms. Right, like whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a short story I I published quite a few years ago now, back oh, more than twenty years ago. I was I was getting annoyed at rejection letters. So I was I was writing short stories and sending them off to different science fiction magazines, and, and you get lots of rejection letters. And I went through a dry spell of having having no acceptances for for quite a while and I was getting annoyed and sometimes when I would get feedback or when I would read the sort of the guidelines or the editor's preferences this is the kind of story we're looking for I you know, I was reading a lot about well we want we want characters who solve problems mm -hmm. we want you know uh, someone who is like an active proactive kind of character who he or she is encountered with a problem and then they they work hard to solve it and I don't know if I, in, in maybe I interpreted what the editors were looking for incorrectly, but I, I was starting to get annoyed at that and says, I, I'm feeling dejected now. I'm, I'm having this sense of rejection and I, I want to write something bleak. And I just, out of sort of spite, I, I thought of the magazine that, that most embodied that kind of, a magazine, uh, I can say the name, it was uh, Analog Magazine, one of the famous science fiction magazines, but it's one that's le leaned, always leaned a bit more than some of the others towards hard science fiction. And and perhaps in some ways sort of less character-oriented stories and more interested in plot-oriented stories. Mm -hmm. At least it was you know, back in the, in the 80s and 90s. And that, in my annoyance, embodied, that's, I, I'm finding that annoying. So I sat down to write a story almost out of spite about a writer who is feeling sorry for himself. And I, I recognize that I was feeling a bit too much sorry for myself, but I wanted to write a story about a writer who's pessimistic and becoming cynical and is encountering magazines like this and hates it. And I wrote a story about that. And by the end of the time I got to the story, the character had transformed himself into solving problems in his, his battle against these magazines. And so he became the kind of character he didn't want to write about. Mm -hmm. And my story became a story about that kind of character. Mm -hmm. And um, it just, it wasn't in my plans. And then part of the surprise too is 20 years later, like last year, Analog Magazine accepted another story, not, not that story, because I'd already published that story. Mm -hmm. Analog Magazine accepted a story I submitted to them. And I said, okay, this magazine that I was so annoyed at is one of my first sort of, you know, professional pay scale, uh, bigger name science fiction nice. publications. Nice. <laughs> so, well, maybe that's that disquiet, that frustration. I mean, for, I think for the task of the artist, 
Uh, you need to have, look, I, look, maybe you don't need it. Maybe it's just me saying it, but I would think that you need to have that little itch. You need to have that little, like, because in a sense, like, what is, what is a story? A story typically has a crisis, you know, something happens. Uh, so in a sense, you know, your, your, your narrative as in terms of writing and getting published just wasn't happening. And then you had this sort of crisis moment where you're just like, God damn it. Like, how do I make this happen? How do I unblock this? And, um, yeah. So maybe that's the bigger story is that, oh yeah, that's how, how, um, you got to the next stage, right? As a, maybe as a learning. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, it was, was a learning thing. It was a learning thing for me. And, uh, but yeah, it worked out and it, it worked out in a way that I wrote a story that went in a direction that I didn't quite expect didn't quite expect. And I had, again, it was, I, there was some plotting and planning and sort of construction of the story, but there was also just intuition and following the characters in the situation and to, to come up with something that, you know, I hadn't expected. Mm -hmm. Is the photo, is, is the room in the photo where you're leaning back with your eyes closed, dreaming, imagining, thinking of, of new lands, is that the room where you're in now? Yes, it is. Uh huh. Okay, so um, what what is your what is your writing routine? Do you have a writing routine, or do you just write whenever you feel like it, or do you are you very? Well, so, uh, so, uh, yeah, I've uh, I've I've still got a day job. I'm still doing the environmental social science research oh, wow. kind of work. Wow, uh, that's what I'm doing nine to five. Uh, but so for writing fiction, I I usually get uh, a few hours in. Uh, every Saturday and every Sunday and two or three evenings a week, uh, an hour or two. And once in a while, uh, I'll, I'll force myself to wake up early at like 5 a.m. I am a morning per person, or at least at some point in my life, I, I used to be, and I remind myself, <laughs> of that and force myself to get up. Uh, but yeah, no, normally, yeah. Uh, two or three weekday evenings a week, and then uh, a few hours each Saturday and each Sunday. Got it. Uh, Lance, um, I, listen, I understand the, the, well, you know, just the, the process of writing and, uh, I'm looking at this photo, I'm hearing you talk about it. Uh, you know, we're like brothers. So let's move on to the next photo. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting.